Welcome to Mineral Springs Park in Pekin, Illinois for the 1996 Illinois High School Association Class AA Softball Championship Game. Hello everyone, I'm Ann Pence and I'm pleased to have with me this evening Lori Ramsey, a Hall of Fame pitcher and coach of Illinois Central College. And Lori, we're going to see two premier programs here tonight. The Quad City area is Moline and nearby Morton High School. Both teams have been here three years in a row and I don't think they're going to be satisfied unless they go home with the gold. Well, Moline was in the championship game last year with a freshman pitcher, Alicia Gerlach. And this year they have a sophomore pitcher, Alicia Gerlach, who has set this tournament on its ear with her near perfect pitching and two home runs, uh, long home runs, a wonderful hitter. And she has a lot of wonderful hitters around her in the lineup. Moline has won three state championships, but has yet to win one for coach Robin McConnell. Lori talked to Robin about preparing differently this year compared to last. Well, I think in preparation, mostly we just are really focused that we don't want to get silver. I mean, it was great to be in the championship game and to uh, say that we were in the top two in the entire state, but we really have set a team goal this year that we wanted to come back down here and to take first, first place. And I think I've been a little more focused and I've, I've tried to help them be more focused in practice time to uh, mental preparation and uh, being prepared for every play in our game, both offensively and defensively. Though she's certainly been a star in both the mound and at the plate, Lori talked to Alicia Gerlach about her pitching. Let's see, well, I started pitching when I was 10 and um, I basically done that in shortstop. And I went to a pitching coach and uh, usually in uh, tougher games when the the score is close. I pitch tougher. I usually think I pitch better in those games. And when games aren't so close, I kind of slack off. Not really slack off, but I don't work as hard. But um, I just concentrate on what pitch I'm throwing and where it's supposed to go and how that batter is and how to pitch to him. There you see her stats. What a fine player she is. Just a sophomore. She'll be throwing to battery mate Nikki Gorge, a three-year starty on the Moline Maroons. Morton High School has finished both second and third. Coach Gigi McIntosh is ready to take on the championship game this year. Well, Morton's very similar to Moline in the fact that they have a sophomore pitcher, Kristen Smith, who has come on very strong for the team and replaced Ashley Fowser this year. They also moved Brooke Monroe in from center field to replace uh, Brooke Hatterman, and that move has worked also. They have power hitters through the first six spots in the lineup and perhaps the best hitting team in this tournament. Here's what Gigi had to say about rebuilding from last year's team. Well, I think you have to start uh, with pitching and, and we have, have that. We have three uh, quality pitchers on our staff and then you have to look to the seniors to pick up uh, the slack and we've had great senior leadership with Lori Griner, Melissa Allen and Lucy Miller. Um, they should be leading the team and they've done that all year. One of those senior leaders is three-year starter Lori Griner at shortstop. Here's what she had to say about her evolution of the state tournament experience. Well, I think I'm a lot more relaxed this year, and the whole team's a lot more relaxed because there wasn't as much pressure put on us throughout the year to get here and to do well here. So we kind of surprise people and can just take it easy and play our game. She set the school record for home run. She's a power hitter, part of that power hitting middle of the lineup, batting 460, Lori Griner. Along with her will be hard hitting first baseman, Lucy Miller. She's hitting 314, and of course, she has some home runs to her credit as well. Outstanding players, outstanding pitching. We've got it all tonight. We'll be back with the starting lineups right after this. turned into a beautiful evening here at Middle Spring Park in Pekin, Illinois, and we are set to bring you a, an outstanding game between Morton and Moline as you see the sportsmanship banner flying in this nice breeze. That is the emphasis of the IHSA this year. Catch someone doing good, something good, and look at these fans. They are ready to see it tonight, and let's go to the starting lineups with PA announcer Greg Ayers. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Illinois High School Association, 
Welcome to the championship game of the 1996 Girls Class AA State Softball Tournament. First, let's meet the umpires for tonight's game. Behind the plate will be Sally Walker from Monticello. At first base, Pat Creek of Quincy. And at third base, Chris Wong of Seagull. And now let's meet the coaches and players for tonight's game. First for the home team, the Potters of Morton High School, to enter the game with a record of 34 wins and four losses, please meet Coach Gigi McIntosh, who has a career record of 274 wins and 119 losses in her 13th season. For the visiting team, the Lady Maroons of Moline High School, who entered this game with a record of 24 wins and nine losses, Please meet Coach Robin Linway McConnell, who has a career record of 46 wins, 22 losses, and one tie in her second season. And now let's meet the remaining players and coaches. First for Morton, assistant coaches Monica McLaughlin, John Fowler, and Kathy Schmidt. And assistant coaches for Moline, Kelly Gorgel and Kim Cook. And the athletic trainer for Morton is Michelle DeBoer. And now let's meet the players. For Morton, number one, Jenny Neely. For Moline, number three, Susan Baker. For Morton, number two, Angela Simmons. For Moline, number four, Abby Hodge. For Morton, number three, Danya Tetrault. For Moline, number five, Amanda Bevins. For Morton, number four, Tammy Spezio. For Moline, number six, Erin Cream. For Morton, number five, Brooke Monroe. For Moline, number seven, Alicia Kelly. For Morton, number six, Christy Kesey. For Moline, number eight, Megan Wild. For Morton, number seven, Melissa Allen. For Moline, number nine, Abby Weiss. For Morton, number eight, Angie Wakehazer. For Moline, number 10, Jess Tim. For Morton, number 10, Amber Stahura. For Moline, number 11, Nikki Gorge. For Morton, number 11, Christy Falk. For Moline, number 12, Jenny Chase. For Morton, number 12, Kristen Smith. And for Moline, number 13, Amy Vanderven. For Morton, number 16, Lucy Miller. For Moline, number 16, Jenny White. For Morton, number 17, Lori Greiner. For Moline, number 17, Sammy Goldstone. For Morton, number 18, Amanda Schmidgall. For Moline, number 18, Brooke Cross. For Morton, number 21, Andy Sh Amy Schloppy. For Moline, number 20, Alicia Gerlach. And number 21, Mickey Walker. Ladies and gentlemen, those are the coaches, players, and participants in tonight's championship game of the girls class AA state softball tournament. There you have it as the crowd prepares to cheer on their team. There's a fine crowd here this evening. Both these teams have great followings and they have a long history. Now you look at the defensive lineup for Morton. The 
Infield from third to first. Wakehazer, Griner, Simmons, and Miller, the two seniors at first and short. The battery, Smith and Monroe in the outfield left to right. Spezio, Neely, and Stahura. Very strong defensive lineup for the Potters, though we've talked mostly about their hitting. They are young, having only three seniors, two of which start, but they are very, very experienced. And, Lori, they play 100 games in the summer. This is just uh, hardly a ripple, four or five games on a weekend for these girls. <laughs> Uh, they do that in one day in ASA Summer Ball, and that's why they're here, because ASA Summer Ball has done a lot, along with high school ball, to develop them. The lineup for the Moline Maroons. Coming to bat, they will be the visitors this evening. Sammy Goldstone in center, Amanda Bevins at second. The pitcher, and what a hitter, Alicia Gerlach. She's got also Alicia Kelly hitting behind her in left field. The catcher, three-year starter, Nikki Gord. Brooke Cross at first, Jess Sim at the hot corner at third, and... Amy Vanderven at shortstop, Aaron Green and right, and the DH will be Jenny Light. Moline will have the first chance to put him across, and Morton was very excited to be the home team. There they come onto the field, the Potters. There's your pitcher, Kristen Smith, just a sophomore. Her record is 18 and one, sporting about a 1.13 ERA, ERA as she gets a last minute check from that's assistant coach Monica McLaughlin that just gave her last words of encouragement. Monica McLaughlin was a starter on the Moline 1988 championship game. Well, there are a lot of similarities between the coaching staffs because Gigi McIntosh, the head coach for Morton, and Robin Lindley McConnell, the head coach for Moline, played together on, of all teams, the Pekin Lets right here in <laughs> Pekin, Illinois, where the tournament's being held. So with a 21-year history of the tournament, we've got a lot of history between these two teams. As you look at the field, our game conditions, our officials will be home at home plate, Sally Walker. At first base, Pat Creek. And at third, Chris Long, a three-person umpiring crew for these tournament, which they carry through the quarters, semis, and the finals. Game conditions, a cool 55 degrees. Northwest winds 10 to 15 and calm at times. There's a threat of rain, as there has been all through the tournament. One game, the last quarterfinal, was delayed last night. So one team, Chatham Glenwood, played three games today, finishing in fine fourth place to Glenbard North, who finished out with a win as well. And Sammy Goldstone's going to lead it off, the junior outfielder. Left-handed hitter, lead off. And Smith fires for the right one. And so she finds the plate right away and challenges the hitter. Looking down to the coach, Robin McConnell, is Goldstone, a speedy runner and a lefty hitter. Of course, that gives you two less steps to get there. She pops one out to center to Neely, who grabs it for out number one. Both these teams are hard-hitting teams. I don't think you'll see a lot of strikeouts in this, either by either team in this game, even though both pitches, pitchers are probably the two best pitchers in this tournament. And that's going to bring up Amanda Bevins, a senior second baseman. Wearing number five. Not many seniors in either of these lineups. High and inside, ball one. Martin's outfield composed of entire sophomore players. Looks down at Smith, the lefty fires. And Tuno gets behind this one. So getting the first strike down the pipe and getting the first out rather easily, she falls behind Bevan, two and off. Moline's been extremely patient in this tournament as far as the strike zone. They know the strike zone, they swing at good pitches. Freshman Angela Simmons has a little trouble with that one, but shows her tournament experience after three games here and puts the put out over to Lucy Miller for the out. Here comes the supreme test for Kristen Smith. Gerlach has hit the ball over the fence twice, and uh, <laughs> I believe the coach told you she'd been on base 16 consecutive times in, in tournament play. Either walking her or her own bat. Now, she has tied the tournament record for number of home runs in a tournament with two, popping them over the fence. And guess who holds that record? Her Ke assistant coach, Kelly Gorko, who set it in 1988 for Rock Island Island. Nice pitch by Smith. Count goes 0 and 2, so some might think they wouldn't challenge. They came right at it, but not giving her anything up in the strike zone. They're going to keep it low and away as much as possible. But she 
has a sweet swing. High and outside. Tries to waste one. Gerlich is too much of a veteran to go for that one. Gerlich hit both home runs over the right center field fence, but they're playing her straight away and deep. Lefty to lefty. Oh, tries to change. Pops overhead and evens the count at two and two. So we've got twos across the board. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs in the top half of the first double-A championship game. Gerlach has power and she connects. Foul ball. Stays tight in the box. A good at bat. Earlier today, they pitched to her once. She hit a home run and that's the last good pitch she had to swing at. So a lot of these teams just walk her. They give her first base. There's a lot of, <laughs> I tell you what, that's not a bad decision. That's one of the reasons she's been on so much. She just hits the ball a ton. And now you're gonna look at this one she got underneath of it. Neely's gonna be able to camp under it. But boy, I tell you what, the power was there. So no damage done. There are no hits, no runs, no errors. And after one half inning, it's nothing, nothing. We'll be back. And it's time for the bottom half of the first. Nothing, nothing. So we've got a bunch of goose eggs up there, but it's early. Let's take a look at the defense for the Maroons of Moline. From third to first, it's Tim, Vanderbilt, Bevins, and Frost. The outfield left to right, Kelly, Goldstone, and Green. And it's Gerlach and Gorge, the battery. Gerlach throws right. Nikki Gorge, the senior catcher, who has started three years in a row down here for the Maroons. Yes, and she's an outstanding defensive catcher. She does a great job of blocking the low pitch. There's Nikki Gorge. We've talked about her before, good hitting catcher, and very quick release. She's tough to run against. No one stolen on her in this tournament. She got the ball down to second in a flash today. And the Potters of Morton, who have just been hitting the stuffing out of the ball. Let's take a look. It's Brooke Monroe, the catcher, leading off. Kristen Smith, the pitcher. So the battery leads off in second. Lori Griner at short. Angie Wakehazer, the highest hitting, 500 hitting third baseman. Amber Stahura at right. Lucy Miller, the first baseman. Angela Simmons at second base, the freshman. Amanda, Amanda Smithall at the DH. Tammy Spezio on left. And Jenny Neely, who had plenty of action in the top half of the first, finishes up and becomes the second leadoff hitter out of the nine spot. So Brooke Morrow, who moved from center to catcher to help her team, leads ball. off, and it's outside, ball one. Monroe's a power hitter as well as a leadoff hitter. She's a versatile athlete. She also plays on the Morton High School basketball team, and I think's made a tremendous adjustment from center field to catch. Not too much similarity in those two positions. Hard hit to Bevins. She gets down in clean form and knocks it over to Brooke Cross for the out. Well, second to first route number one. As you can see, she takes the outside pitch to the right. Bevins gets down low and stays right in front of the ball. You got to look at the double first base that's used down here. It's white on the fair side and orange on the foul side. It saved a lot of collisions, prevented a lot over the years since we've gotten it. It's an expensive piece of equipment, so a lot of teams don't have it, but it's nice to have. It's too bad it's not standard everywhere, and I think in future years it may be. Kristen Smith, the batter, the pitcher. Chance to go against her nemesis, Gerlach on the mound, and see if she can do some damage for her own side. Fouled off into the dugout of the Potters, and she'll come back. Or she woke up her teammates, but she'll come back with an 0-2 count. We saw Kristen Smith in left field earlier today. A lot of these Morton players play more than one position, as do the Maroons. Younger the players are, too. A lot of times they're waiting for a senior to vacate. A hard hit out to center, but it's going to be right there. It's Sammy Goldstone waiting for it for the out. So just as we expected, a couple of teams have hit the ball hard and good defensive teams, and so far they're going right according to the plan. Two out, bottom half of the first. We talked about pitching and we talked about hitting, but it may be defense that decides it. So often with teams like this, though, tries to change down the shortstop, Andy Vanderbilt. And she throws over to Brooke Cross for the out. So the Potters go down one, two, three, and after one complete inning of play, it's zero, zero. We'll be back. Don't go away. We talked about history. These two teams have met before. On the 18th of May, which is a couple of weeks ago, they played and Morton beat Moline. 
Moline doesn't feel it had its best game of the year by far, so they're ready to atone for that tonight. And besides that, it doesn't mean a thing as it's fouled off by Alicia Kelly. The only one that counts is this one. Like Coach Yuji McIntosh said, it's like having three numbers in the lottery, not all six. <laughs> Well, Kelly hit a, a roaring 456 this year, so uh, as cleanup hitter, I think she's done her job. And now, following Gerlach is a nice place to be. Kristen Smith is what you call a power pitcher. She's got a change up, but it's not one that she has, I don't think, a lot of confidence in yet. I'm sure she's still working on it. She can throw the ball very hard, and she has great control. Yep, there's the pitcher talking about. There's the changeup, and uh, her release is a little bit, uh, it wonders on her. Sometimes she <laughs> holds the ball too long, and that's what happens when you throw the ball high. If you release it too soon, you see the uh, bowling ball into the dirt. Smith goes low and outside for that one. And the count goes three and one. So after going ahead on the first two hitters in the first inning, she's gotten quickly behind on cleanup hitter Alicia Kelly. Good look at Smith, the sophomore. These two teams don't swing at many bad pitches. Right down the pipe, great pitch. Full count. Nice rise ball thrown by Kristen Smith, and she has a good rise ball. Challenge Kelly, and won that battle. Let's see what happens in this one. Then fouled away, so a good at bat and a struggle. The pitchers are 40 feet away in high school, throwing somewhere between, what, 50 and 60 miles per hour? Away? I'd say Kristen Smith throws between 55 and 60 miles an hour, and uh, I'd say that Alicia Gerlach throws about the same. Oh, oh, that ball went shooting off. A chance at first. Nice heads up play by right fielder Amber Strahura. Just a hair late, says Pat Creek, but a great attempt. So Kelly on with a sharply hit liner to right. Morton has a great defensive outfield with a lot of speed. You see the outside pitch taken to right field just as it should. One bounce liner and Stahura makes a great throw. Lucy Miller makes a nice stretch too. It was close. That was a very good play at both ends. A bang bang play just barely safe. So Nikki Gorge comes up with the first run of the ball game on first, and the person of Alicia Kelly tries to bunt her across. That is classic softball strategy. Nobody out, sacrifice her to second. Well, they both know that one run may win this game, so we're going to start right from the beginning playing for it. First baseman Lucy Miller way in, and Angie Wakeser comes in. It's going to be fielded by Kristen Smith. It goes to first. Wakeser hustles back to third to keep Kelly from advancing any further. We have one out on the sacrifice by Nikki Gord. So down to second goes Kelly as you look at the bunt. Perfectly done. The key thing is, is to put the ball down. Brooke Cross showed her power today when she tripled with the bases loader, loaded in the game uh, before this and uh, runs fairly well also. If there's ever a time to put one across, this is the one she'd like to pick. Cross is a junior, tries to go down the right field line and go with the pitch, but out of bounds. Foul ball. 0-1, oh one, one out. And Kelly on second. Number 18, Brooke Cross, a junior. Both teams have some good power through the middle of the lineup. Slight edge maybe to Morton, but not by much. Fouled again on the offering by Smith. This could be a matchup we see in future years with Kristen Smith, the sophomore for Morton, and, and Alicia Gerlach, the sophomore for Moline. This is Gerlach's second year in the state finals. Smith hasn't pitched in the finals, but she was here last year. Ashley Fowser at that time was the ace for Morton, currently pitching for the University of Wisconsin. Tries to draw and suckering for one outside, no dice. One and two. We look at Kelly on second. She represents what would be the lead run in this game. And she has good speed. Kelly's a left fielder. Asking time, says Brooke Cross. Wants to make sure her feet are set. 
They have wiped out the batter's box, so there's nothing to see about tonight. And that she has looked at Paul strike three. Kristen Smith finds the corner inside. Caught her looking. We're out number two. As we see the pitch here, the target set low. Low and looked like it broke right over the middle of the plate. I think the umpire made a pretty good call on that. She knew it. She looked back. Went, Ugh. She knew she'd missed that. That's Tim, the third baseman, senior. With two outs. Goes right back to Smith, who can put it out and solves the dilemma that she got herself into on the hard hit by Kelly. So there was one hit, but it stayed on second in the first of Alicia Kelly. We'll be back for the bottom half of two right after this. I'd like to remind you that the broadcast rights for this event have been granted to Sports Channel by the Illinois High School Association. Any reproduction or rebroadcast of this event without the express written consent of Sports Channel and the IHSA is prohibited. It's the only maroon going to defend against the Potters, and it's going to be first up Angie Wakehage with a 500 hitting third baseman junior. Angie, multi sport athlete, moved here from Colorado. Angie plays volleyball, basketball, and softball, and in her first at bat in this tournament, hit the ball to the fence. The left fielder crashed into the fence and made a great catch on her. Well, I know that one really hurt. Out of the top seven hitters in Morton, they all had home runs except Angie. <laughs> and they took it from her here at the tournament, so <laughs> she'd like to tell for that, and what a bet, good place to do it, but tonight. But right now, getting on base is the key, but Alicia Gerlach says not this time, and the sophomore Tosses over to Cross for the out. Putting Wakehazer back, and that's gonna bring up Sahura. If you look at Gerlach, as you can see on this ball, it certainly helps to be five foot 10, which Angie Gerlach is. Those tall pitchers cut those high hoppers off up the middle. Well, it was 5'10 at the plate versus 5'10 on the mound, and this time the mound won. Hard hit right at Sahura. A long throw by Jess Tim with a bullet for the out. Tim has played outstandingly in the field for Moline in this tournament. She's got an excellent arm. Goes to her backhand side, takes a step, and throws a bullet over there. Stahura has good speed, and she threw her out by three steps. Brings, a, brings up designated hitters. Uh, this is Lucy Miller at bat. That was Stahura on the out. Miller, first baseman, senior. Well, only three on this Potter lineup. Lucy Miller's another multi-sport athlete. She's an excellent basketball player for Morton High School, and she has three home runs on the season, which tells us oh. she's got a little power. Alicia Gerlach decided to negate that power, tried the change, and got it across for the strike. One and two, there are two outs in the bottom half of the second inning. Double A championship game. Gerlach on the mound. Gerlach has an excellent changeup, but her best pitch is her out curve, which she throws frequently and uh, throws it in the same fashion that many pitchers from the Moline area throw the out curve where she ends up with her side completely to the batter. That one down to Vanderbilt who comes up throwing and they go down one, two, three. So after two innings, we have no score. Let's look at the maroon. Come back. We've got more action ahead. It takes two games to get here to the championship game, a quarterfinal and a semi. And here's how Moline got here. They defeated Belvedere way back in the sectional semifinals and the tough uh, Harlem Machesi Park team. Then they took a tough one nothing win against Sag and then beat the third place team, Glenbard North, 10 to two. Hard hit, but foul by Amy Vanderven. Amy Vanderven has one of the strongest arms you'd care to see in this tournament, <laughs> and what a quick release to go with that strong arm at shortstop. Just a junior, it's her first time up at bat in this game. You've seen some of the arms around this, both these teams. Nice pitch by Smith. Count 0-2, so she gets ahead. Doing a little house cleaning. Kristen Smith certainly isn't afraid to bring the ball at him, and she has excellent speed. That was a high outside pitch that the uh, batter took. Vanderbilt with an 0-2 count. 
And she pops it in. It may fall. Drops in front of Jenny Neely for a hit. She's backed up nicely by Stahura and held to a single. Nice hit by Vandervan, the number eight hitter in this lineup. Vandervan just sort of reach, reaches down and pokes it. It's a little bit of a wet shot over the second baseman's head and in front of Jenny Neely in center field. Reached right down and poked it. Didn't try and power it, just punched it over the infield. That brings up designated hitter Jenny Light who bunts for the sacrifice. They try to go to second, throw it into the outfield, and that is going to bring in at least one run. Light going to third on the green light. Around the score comes Vandervan on the catching error by Brooke Norman or Brooke Monroe. And on to third goes Jenny Light after the single. So a tough break for the Potters. Well, we said earlier that if, that we had talked about pitching and hitting, but defense might uh, decide it. And Kristen Smith throws the ball over the uh, second baseman's head, over the shortstop's head covering second base and uh, at an angle where center fielder uh, Jenny Neely could not uh, get in front of it, and, and it was just a very tough thing to happen to a pitcher at this time. It'll be interesting to see how Kristen bounces back from this. A tough play for a pitcher, especially a left-handed pitcher coming around. Catcher probably was giving instructions. It was a close play. You got to take some chances in this situation because you know 1-1 one, one may be the difference. She's got a great arm. This time it just didn't work out. Went a little bit high as she turned around on the pivot to throw. Well, she's made that play earlier in the tournament trail. And uh, I think uh, Coach McIntosh called a very wise time out now to kind of settle the waters here a little bit so they can concentrate. And also to discuss uh, infield position with this runner on third base. The infield's going to have to come in uh, to try and cut the runner down at the plate. So there are no outs. We're in the top half of the third inning. Jenny Light, after singling, and the error by the pitcher, Kristen Smith, is on third. Jenny Light, the batter. We Vandervin on third. We have two girls with great speed uh, in Sammy Goldstone and Amanda Bevins at the plate. And you may see just that, the bunt situation, the squeeze play. Uh, they may try and uh, create a run here. And it is Sammy Goldstone up to bat. Jenny Light on third. Hard hit, and the inf infield pulled in. Miller makes a nice play, whoa, almost took it herself and then tossed it to Angela Simmons. The hesitation almost was disastrous, but a great play as they got it together. Well, Goldstone can fly down the line, and uh, Kristen Smith did a great job of jamming her there. And they just got to throw there about a half step in time. And this young lady, Amanda Bevins, can fly down the line too, but she's on the right-hand side, so you've got about a split second more to work on her. So you've got speed on third, and you've got speed at bat in the person of Amanda Bevins, who went to second the last time, was out second to first. And a strike. So Kristen Hill, or Kristen Smith, has done a great job coming right back after his throwing error, getting it out, and now getting ahead of the next batter. She's pitching with a lot of poise after that mistake. Infield is way in. Oh, attempted bunt, fouled off. So it's possible squeeze, maybe just an attempt to get on. 0 oh 2 probably won't see that. Everybody in. You Shortstop's about two steps in front of the baseline, and the corners are way in. Right back to Smith. Throws the out. They're going home. Oh, great play. So after a tough situation on the bunt, Kristen Smith comes back with flying colors as a sophomore. Here it is. As you can see, as the ball is hit, Kristen Smith fields it, makes a nice throw to first, and Lucy Miller comes off without any hesitation. She wasn't surprised a bit. Makes a perfect throw home. Monroe has the plate blocked. There was no place for the runner to go. Sally Walker threw her out, but we're out before. One run is on the board right now. Don't go away. We'll be back with the bottom half of the third with the Moline Maroons in the lead. 
you look at the IHSA banner, you'll have an idea of how many teams come over. 600 teams that are both A and AA, and here's how the Potters got to the finals. Washington, Chicago, Washington, then they had a tough game against Chicago Maria, one to nothing. So both teams in the quarters, one to nothing, and then Chatham Glenwood, 10 to three. So very similar route here at the state tournament in terms of scores. And they're up to bat in the bottom of the third, trailing one to nothing. An unearned, wor unearned run in the top half. Oh! Actually, actually, Ann, uh, Morton got here by beating Washington, not Chicago, Washington. And uh, Washington and Morton are about uh, just a few miles apart, and they have a tremendous rivalry. And uh, earlier in the, this year, Washington beat Morton, but they didn't get the job done in the big game. Morton won the, won the one that counted. And that's why they're here in the person of number 18, Amanda Smitko. Oh! The designated hitter is leading it off here when her count goes one and two. So they want to get a runner on and get something going and make this Moling Maroon team play some defense. They've hit the ball, just haven't found a hole as yet. Oh, she almost hit, but sliding on her knee, Sammy Goldstone steals it away. Terrific play out there in center field, and she got a great jump on that ball. It looked like it was in there. As you can see by the pitch, she took a low outside pitch and just poked it, and, and uh, Goldstone slid on her knees, which is a technique used a lot by outfielders instead of the dive. Tammy made it look easy because it looked like it had hit written all over it, but great break on the ball, and she was there for out number one. As you look at Tammy Spezio, the left fielder, she does pitch. Hard hit right at Amanda Bevan. Oh, and she overthrows to a break for both teams in the form of throwing errors. Put Fizio on the base pad. <laughs> Spizio takes the outside pitch to second base, and Bevan straightens up for the throw and throws it very quickly and a little bit to the side, and the first baseman did not have enough time really to stretch on that ball. That brings up number one, center fielder Jenny Neely, fouled off on the bunt attempt. Good speed, and there's good speed at first, so we may be able to manufacture a few things, especially with left. Okay, she went to look to bunt left, now she's gonna hit right, so one attempt at that, we'll come back to the other side. Oh, now she's gonna butt right. Oh, and unfortunately foul that one up and away. A well, little bit of gamesmanship going on here. Neely hit 293 during the season. I bet there are a lot of coaches that would like to have their number nine hitter hitting 293. Of course, a lot of these teams have talked about almost two separate lineups where you run your number nine is actually a second leadoff hitter. Well, you always, in softball these days, have somebody quick <laughs> at number nine so that you have quickness between the ninth hitter and the leadoff hitter that's coming around. And uh, I think with uh, Goldstone coming up, I mean with uh, Monroe coming up next, they have that. And not before Alicia Gerlach gets Neely on strike. So there are two outs, and that brings up leadoff hitter Brooke Monroe, the catcher. There are two outs. Runner on first and the person of number four, Tammy Spezio. Monroe's just a sophomore and she hit 416 during the season. Right down the pipe for Gerlach. Monroe hit to second baseman for the out on her first inning. I think she has one of the finest swings in this tournament. Oh, tries to change, it's popped up, maybe in play. Cross takes it for the out and out of the inning and out of trouble go the Maroons. And they'll be back up in the top half of the third, of the fourth. So after three complete innings, and you see some happy Maroons, they have a one-run lead. Stay tuned. There you have the line score. Two errors, both throwing errors. One of them contributing to the one-run lead that Moline has. As we completed three, we're ready to top half of four. We'd like to remind you that the Class AA Baseball Championships are coming your way on Sports Channel. Join Mike Lederman and Mike McDonald this Sunday, June 9th at 4, and see the best in Illinois go for the trophy at Kane County Stadium. It's the AA Baseball Championship only on Sports Channel, your home for the IHSA Championship. Little conversation. Way Hayes are talking to first baseman Lucy Miller across Kristen Smith, who's pitching an outstanding ball game and really had a great comeback, particularly mentally, in that last inning. 
well i think the time out helped her too when the coach came out and settled the whole team down and it's to kristen's credit that she came back and you couldn't tell anything happened you can't let the last air or the last pitch beat you on the next play and she certainly did now we saw the attempt on the bunt coming home with Gerlach up the bat and now she'll lead off the inning try to add to the, her 1-1 lead well with two outs I think uh, Coach McConnell wanted to make sure they got a crack at getting another run I'm sure she uh, might have second thoughts with Gerlach coming up There's nothing to hold back for in this game. Both these coaches with extensive playing experience we talked about. They were teammates here in Pekin, in fact, the team for which you played. Boy, the Pekin Lutz. And they know each other well. McConnell from Moline was a pitcher. And I think that probably has been a great help to Alicia Gerlach to have a pitcher coaching her. Gerlach last time up flied on a high ball to center field. Got plenty on it as she fouls it off the third base side, but got under it just a little bit too much. She's as fine a hitting sophomore as you'll see anywhere in the state. Forget sophomore, as fine a hitter as you'll see. Hit a whopping over 600 in league play. There it is. There it goes. It's out of here. She has just broken her coach's record for being the first girl to hit three home runs over the fence in a single state tournament. It was gone from the minute it hit the bat. I think that was the most prodigious of the three. It cleared that fence by 30 feet. And uh, really, I think that's the longest home run I've seen here as long as I have covered uh, girls softball. And her swing was so quick. I think you'll see that Kristen Smith gets the ball up on her and you can't uh, sneak the rise ball back past Alicia Gerlich. All three of her home runs have been off rise balls. You can see how well, how quick she swings, good body turn, and she's got to be uh, very strong to, hit, to get the bat through it that fast and hit it that far. Well, we talked about it in the open as far as the power of Gerlach, both behind the plate and on the mound, and she just showed you why we've been talking about her as a hitter. The Maroon fans are still buzzing up here. That one just was launched out of here. And that's going to bring up Alicia Kelly as Kristen Smith tries to hold together again. She's done a terrific job under a couple of tough circumstances, and I have no doubt she'll do it again. Two-run lead. I don't think Moline. she's even changed expression. She's already thinking about this next hitter, and that's to her credit. Fouled off on a good pitch by Smith. And Alicia Gerlach has gotten a tremendous number of walks down the tournament trail, and that one blow should show everyone why. That is for sure. Kelly's count is even, 1-1. Goes outside. She's one. one. She's one of the best hitters to ever go through this tournament. And I think she's a very fine pitcher, but I think she's a better hitter. In fact, we might have we might be the reason that happened since we talked about her 16 at bat on base streak <laughs> that she ruined in the first inning after we talked about it. Dug out of there nicely nice by scoop. Lucy Miller from Griner for the out. Good scoop by the senior Miller on the throw by Senior Greiner. Lucy Miller has excellent footwork at first base. She doesn't stretch too soon. She stretches as soon as she sees where the throw's going. A lot of first basemen get in trouble by stretching too soon. And that's the first out of the inning and it brings up catcher Nikki Gord, a senior three-time starter here at State. And it is a ball, one and oh. Nikki Gorge was the 268 hitter during the season. She bats in the five spot for the Maroons. She's another hitter that can hit the ball a long way. Great pitch by Smith, the outside corner right down the pipe. Count goes to two and one with one out. Smith does a good job of moving the ball in and out, in and out. 
Never letting those batters get comfortable. Hard it right back to Griner again. She digs it out and again it's Miller with a good stretch. Making Miller work a little bit. Earning her keep over there. She's not. <laughs> Gorge takes an inside pitch, hits it to the shortstop, who throws the ball just a little bit low, but 5'10", Lucy Miller uh, stretches with ease and catches the ball. That's something she does easily. So with two outs in the top of the fourth, that brings up Brooke Frost, the first baseman, for the season hitting 291, foul off and hit her. Sally Walker behind the plate says, Balbo, come on back. I think it went off her foot. She's grimacing a little bit as she walks back. This happens a lot in softball where batters hit the ball right down off their foot. <laughs> you see her, ooh, she didn't enjoy that too much and I don't blame her. One thing about the softball, the companies are making the core a little harder and that's why it jumps off the bat. There's definitely more hitting in today's softball game than there was eight or 10 years ago. We used to talk about pitchers duels, but lately more of the talk has been about the hitters. It's rare to have a shutout in, in a tournament anymore because uh, the bats are now more uh, live with metal bats. The ball has got a harder core and jumps off the uh, bat quicker. One more action, the fans, oh, nice changeup. That's the best one that she's thrown this game and she had it right where you want to throw a changeup, down. It's much harder to hit a changeup that's down because you pick it up quicker with your eye if you hang it high, and she threw it down and out. Excellent pitch. Didn't get Cross to go for it, so it's two and one. Cross this time goes over Angela Simmons, as freshman second baseman to Miller for the out. So no damage this time by the Maroons, so the Potters get a chance to shake those bats when we come back. Well, as we mentioned, there was no more damage by the Maroons in the last three batters, but the first one, the leadoff hitter, the pitcher, Alicia Gerlach, who you see there on the mound, cranked one over the fence as far as we've ever seen one hit in this park. Here you go. Look at it again. She knew it was gone the minute she hit it. She raised her hands up over her head as she was running the first base. It just jumped out of this park. One of the things that has made Alicia Gerlach effective as a pitcher is her changeup. With Brooke Monroe up in the last inning, a very fine hitter, she got her to pop that ball up in foul territory. She's kept these batters off balance with that pitch. Well, she's facing its pitcher against pitcher as Kristen Smith steps, steps to the plate and she led the inning off with a changeup. So she's thinking, she told me earlier that she thinks that each pitch was she while she's pitching and then when she goes to hit, it's more fun for her, I think. <laughs> well, she definitely is a see the ball hitter. Smith goes down to Bevins who bobbles it and Smith is gonna run it out. So we've got a leadoff base runner for Morton here in the bottom half of the fourth as Bevins had a little difficulty with that ground ball. And Gigi McIntosh comes to the plate, I'm gonna guess, for a pinch runner. One of the sins in fielding is raising your head up to look at the runner, and uh, I think that might have happened with Bevan. She got a bad bounce also on that ball. She was definitely in front of it as an infielder should be. And, and replacing Kristen Smith, the pitcher will be Christy Falk. Christy's a freshman, a pinch runner. She's got great speed. She ran early in the semifinal day in the same situation. And you can bet we're gonna see a little bit of strategy going on right here with up to bat number 17, Lori Griner, the season senior shortstop. Lori Griner is uh, the counterpart of Alicia Gerlach in the fact that she is the prime power girl for Morton. Well, the meat of the lineup up for Morton Three, four, and five here after Kristen Smith let off on the air. With a two-run lead, I don't think that they'll play for one in this situation with a hitter like Greiner up. The ball goes high, evens the count at one and one. So no move in any attempted steal at this point, and that's tough because behind the plate is a gun in the person of Nikki Gord. She is tough to run against, and she's experienced. Ball's high and outside. And 
easy place for a catcher to make a throw if you think there's a play going. That's correct. This is the middle of the Morton lineup, the number three hitter, and they're very tough, three, four, five, and six as far as power is concerned. And Alicia Gerlach is pitching very conservatively right now to Lori Greiner. Greiner's got a two and two count against her. There's a big hole in right center. Now it's moving around. Oh, good pitch by Gerlach. That was her best pitch. The low outside curve. She's got a wonderful out curve and a great follow through. She follows through with her side right to the batter. A little bit of an off speed. Griner's way out ahead of this pitch. One thing you'll notice about the uh, successful pitchers when they get in a hole, they go with their best pitch in tough spots, and that was a two strike pitch. That brings up third baseman, cleanup hitter Angie Wakehazer. Angie went right back to the pitcher her last time up. A 500 hitter who could, uh, and she finds the hole down the right side. Here comes Falk rounding third, going to third, and Wakey's in with a double. So cleanup hitter Angie Wakey's has a ball that has eyes down the right side. I think you'll see in this pitch that Gerlach gets it up and down the middle of the plate. It wasn't a particularly good pitch. And uh, to Angie Wakehazer's credit, she took care of it. You don't want to pitch a power hitter right up in their eyes. And that's exactly what she did. And Angie Wakehazer made her pay. Now we have the tying runs on second and third. Falk didn't get a great break on that, but she made up for lost time. As you look at Wakehazer, who's got the stand-up double. McIntosh, you saw a great shot of the coach down the line, making sure both players could see her as they came around, so she's right in their eyesight. Falk at third, the freshman. Another reason the coach comes that far down the line is she has more time to change her mind on whether to send somebody home or hold them at third. And now up to bat, Amber Stahura, the right fielder with two runners. The tying run is in on second base. She represents the lead run at the plate. Ball, first offering by Gerlach to Stahura. The infield is not in that much. Stahura late on that swing. She looks down at McIntosh. Gerlach went with her best pitch on both of those, the low pitch, the low outside pitch. It's a very tough pitch to hit against her. A lot of room up the middle. Oh, changes speeds on her. She's just excellent at changing speeds. She gets herself in a little trouble once in a while when she comes up high. So she gets to her guessing so far up to bat. The count is one and two, so Gerlach ahead with a big hole up the middle and goes high even to count at two and two. So two on, two balls, two strikes, and one out. That may have been a purpose pitch to set up the low outside pitch. Let's see what she throws here. That's exactly what she did. <laughs> Called it, and she put it right where catcher Nikki Gord gave her the target. Low and outside. She wasted the high pitch, set her up, and came right at her with the low outside pitch. You saw the experienced Nikki Gord take that glove and just grab it right back in there to make sure... They, uh, they uh, tend to move it back over that strike zone on every pitch if they can. Amber, Amber Stahura just looked at that like, oh, love to have that one back. It's Coach Gigi McIntosh talking to senior first baseman Lucy Miller. Two ducks on the pond, second and third. Wakehazer at second and Falk at third. The pinch runner for pitcher Kristen H Smith. Yeah. Playing a great first base has been Lucy Miller. And she'd love to do something at the plate right now. And she's a very dangerous hitter. One thing I learned as a pitcher, when you've got a 5'10 batter up there, you, you sometimes are much more successful staying down. You got all of that, but foul. One on the count. Now she's been using a lot of changes of speed. So far, Lucy Miller's had nothing but the fastball. There goes the change, and it goes right down the tip. Jess Tim, who gets the out as she runs it halfway to first base. So after getting on two runners and threatening in the bottom half of the fourth, they come up empty. Moline still leads by two. 
We'll be back. Here's how the bottom of the fourth ended. Up to bat was Lucy Miller. Down to Jess Tim, who runs it halfway there and tosses over to first baseman Brooke Cross for the out, and she will lead off the top of the fifth. Jess Tim with a gun arm and the sure glove. Not only does she have a sure glove, she has a lot of range. She goes over and takes that ball from the hole that usually goes between third and short. Kristen Smith contemplating what she's gonna throw just him and this gorgeous night. You saw the shot by our great crew here. The flag is absolutely still. There's no wind and right down to Lucy Miller. Look what I've got for the out, unassisted. Kristen Smith throws the ball right down the middle and uh, Tim hits the ball hard but Lucy Miller scoops it up on one bounce. She didn't carry that last out out into the field with her. She had her concentration defensively right, right at the beginning. And that brings up shortstop Amy Vanderven, who scored the first run of this ball game. Hard hit right at Wakehazer, who comes up throwing. No problem over to Miller for the hot corner at the first for the out. So two out very quickly here in the top half of the fifth, and that will bring up designated hitter Jenny Light. Lights on occasion bunted. As you can see, Wakehazer has a great arm, and Miller, of course, has a lot of range there at first. It's hard to throw the ball by a 5'10 first baseman. Well, they got 5'10 on the corner, so it's tough to go anything over and high. So they can play up and, ooh, and foul ball. Almost hit her, but hit the bat. Jenny Light was stranded on third her last time up in the third inning. The pitch just sort of rides up and in on her, and surprises her. She didn't get away from the plate very quickly. I think the ball broke from the left-handed pitcher right in on the right-handed batter. Hit the heel of the bat for a foul ball. So it's 0-1 with two out. Ball high and a little bit outside. Very interesting call in uh, Class A championship game where the ball hit a batter but made no attempt to get out of the way. It wasn't in the championship game. But, uh, you don't often see that. You've got to make an attempt to get out of the way. You can't use it to get yourself on big. I think the ball that hit her in that game was a changeup <laughs> that they wouldn't call. And I think the batter decided, could see that she was going to get hit. and thought that was a pretty easy way to get to first base. Especially if she wants to see the change anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so Jenny Light right now at bat with a two and one count and two out. Top half of the fifth facing Kristen Smith. Oh, hard hit. foul ball. A lot of action, all for not. Everybody moving. Sally Walker signaled that immediately. Outside pitch takes it right down the first base line, and as you can see, it is foul. Low outside pitch right down the first base line. Really stayed with it, went with it. And good eye contact seeing the ball hit the bat. So the count evens at two and two. Yeah. Tried to tempt her. Got a little up in the strike zone, maybe a little outside. Full little, count. Little high and outside. I think Sally Walker does a fine job back there on being consistent with her strike zone. And these pitchers are playing all around that pit. You told me once, Lori, that good pitchers don't throw many strikes. That's right. They try and get you to hit balls. Lucy Miller tries to stab that foul ball going towards the dugout. Not quite, so it's still life for Jenny Light. These two teams are very patient at the plate. You haven't seen them chase many bad pitches, and yet you haven't seen many called third strikes either. They make contact, very few strikeouts. They make you put the ball in, they put the ball in play and make you throw them out. Fouled again, so a great at bat here for Jenny Light, working Kristen Smith pretty hard. We've got a terrific crowd here tonight, Ann, and one that's had a lot of spirit. Morton brought a lot of balloons and released them as their team was introduced. Coach Robin Lindley is uh, down there talking to the hitters, and Angela Simmons throws out light for out number three. So the Potters are gonna come to bat, facing a 
two-run deficit in the fifth inning. Stay tuned. Don't forget to keep up with your favorite high school and local college teams every night on the Sports Channel Report. On top of taking the most informing look at the world of professional sports, the Sports Channel Report is Chicagoland's only nightly half hour of local sports news, features, scores, and highlights every night at 10 or after the game. There's some of the fine crowd here at Mineral Springs Park in Pekin, Illinois, braving the cool weather. You can see the jackets on as you look at designated hitter Amanda Schmidtko, who hits that one out long but into the glove. So out number one, says Sammy Goldstone. Angie Gerlach threw that pitch right down the middle, and that's where she hit it, right down the middle. <laughs> you know, Ann, this tournament's been here for 21 years, and they have 27 state tournaments in the IHSA, and it's the only one that still has its original site and original tournament director, Barb Waddell. And she is from Pekin High School. They do a fantastic job in cahoots with the Pekin Park District, who's one of the finest grounds crews you'll ever see. This side of Wrigley or Comiskey. That is hard hit into the hands and glove of Aaron Crean. The junior stabs that can of corn for out number two. So Tammy Spezio on a fly ball to right will bring up Jenny Neely, number one, the center fielder. A lot of speed here and a potential bunner. Even with two out, she might put it down. The infield in. They know she's quick. Tries to slap it down. Strike one. The slap bunt is a big weapon in softball where the batter comes running out of the box and swings at the ball. They are really in on her, expecting no power. We talked about this ground crew. Last night, the quarterfinal game was postponed due to rain. There was a deluge, a river behind the press box, and this crew had this ready to go at 7 o'clock this morning. That is hard at right at and it is picked up by Bevins on the throw by pitcher Gerlach. So they go down, but not without some pizzazz on that last at bat by Jenny Neely. So after five complete innings of play, it is still the Moline Maroons two. The Potters of Morton, nothing. Here you look at Sally Walker behind the plate, the umpire doing a little house cleaning. We'd really like to mention you under the, the uh, leadership of Bobby, Ma Bobby Mattingly here as you look at Chris Long, who's over at third, and Pat Creek, who's over at first. These umpires have a long history of outstanding service to the game as well as outstanding tournament play. Pat Creek's going to be doing the Olympic team when it comes into town in Bloomington Normal. Most of them have done national caliber tournaments as that pitch is fouled off by Sammy Goldstone. And it's another way to get involved if you're done playing the game. The IHSA is always looking for officials. We need young players after their careers to continue to participate and get back to the game they love. Think about becoming an up. It's a great way to participate and help out your local high school sport. Sammy Goldstone on the hit back to Kristen Smith. Tosses over to Miller for the out. Number one. So the leadoff hitter retired, and that will bring up Amanda Bevins, who grabbed that ball on the for the last out of in inning number five, Bevins, second baseman. He's a senior, 0 for 2 tonight. Bevins is another girl with tremendous Whoa. speed. They have two girls that can really fly at the front of their lineup in Goldstone and Bevins. So we're at the top of the lineup for the Maroons, fouled away. Both these pitchers are in their own little zone out here. I think their concentration is excellent. They're both pitching very, very well. There's been a lot of contact by teams, some hard hits, of course, the most notable of which was Gerlach's bomb over the right center field fence, fouled away by Bevins. Well, it was her third bomb. She's had a bomb in every game, so I don't think Smith needs to feel too badly about that. Not at all. Uh, these batters are all making some contact. Some of the balls have not had eyes, and we've had solid fielding. With the exception of two throwing errors, this has been as great a game as you could ever want. Right back up with a good pitch. Smith gets her. So Smith has both assists in this half of the inning. And that will bring up the lady we talked about, Alicia Gerlach. Who now, last time up, Homer. Smith has pitched to her both times. A lot of teams just pitch around her. We'll, it'll be interesting to see if after the home run she 
pitches around her. Nice pitch, low and outside. I would say she's not the least bit intimidated. Came right at her. And she gets her, so all the plays going to Smith, and she nails all three. So quickly set down are the Maroons, and the Potters will come to bat in the bottom half of the six. Down by two. Don't go away. Well, look at the balloons. That's not one of the ones that got sent high into the sky by Morton, but that is one that they like. Everybody hits, runs, and... Scores. Well, that's exactly what they like to do with leadoff hitter Brooke, Brooke Monroe. Bottom half of the six. And it is a called strike. Beautiful out curve by Ger Ger Gerlach. This is the bottom of the sixth inning, and I think it's very important for Morton to do something right now. They got the very top of their order up. They'll be right in the, the, the best hitters on their team. Either way, they've got just where you want to be at this time, and Monroe yet to be on base tonight. The leadoff hitter, so she wants to get on any way she can, but Gerlach, the 5'10 figure of the pitcher, right in the way of that ball, and she, she tosses her out easily. She threw her, she threw her the off-speed pitch again. Off-speed and got it down. Throws her a little bit what they call the back-of-the-hand changeup, and of course, Gerlach is a excellent fielder. She helps herself a lot in every phase of the game. Fielding, hitting, and pitching. She's an athlete. Again, she takes Smith and gives her a look at the changeup. She pitches very intelligently. I think that's probably a little bit to Nikki Gorge's credit because she's calling the game. Smith just closed her eyes after that one. She pulled her all the way around. Smith got in on an error and let off the inning on the fourth, unable to move her around after a pinch runner was stranded on third. Oh, and two. Goes high, waste one. She shows batters the rise ball, but she doesn't throw it very often. She's a low outside changeup pitcher. Oh, right off the body. Picked up beautifully by Amy Vanderbilt, but unable to get the speeding Kristen Smith and helps her own cause and gets on for the second time in a row. I expect we cannot see a pinch runner at this point unless they want to replace Smith. Vanderbilt Smith just really hit that ball, and of course uh, she threw her an out curve. She had the uh, follow through where your side is to the plate, and you're totally. The bad thing about that is you're totally out of uh, fielding position. The good thing is it's a great pitch and it's very hard to hit. She got it up a little and a little bit fatter than I think she would have liked and of course was not in fielding position. Well, we got Smith on in the fourth inning and it brought up Reiner, the senior shortstop, as you see Smith putting on a jacket to stay warm. It's cool tonight, probably around 50, 52 degrees. It started about 55, but because there's no wind, it hasn't felt too bad. It's a nice night to play, really. The, the players can get warm, and yet it's not too hot. Here's the home run threat for Morton. Lori Greiner leads them in home runs with 10. Oh, and just as you said it, Lori, it could be. It is out of here. You can see the Morton fans really are enjoying this one, and the entire third base bleachers is full of Morton fans. The place erupted when Greiner cranked that one out. She was the player that you had to look at to get, get them even on the board. She's, she's a power hitter. She's come up with the big home run all year, and she did it again. We see uh, the pitch. And we see it up a little bit, and that's what happens with uh, Gerlach's high pitch. They don't hit her low pitch, and they don't hit her change up. She got under it a little bit, so you get an idea of the power that she's got, because she didn't well, hit all of that ball. She's got a lot of power. She's right in uh, Gerlach's lead for power. The Morton fans just love that. This place erupted on that hit. 
And just as her teammates came flying out of the dugout, and Angie Wakehazer, the third baseman, cranks one down to second, for the, but it is an out on the put out by Bevins after all the excitement has tied up this ball game in the bottom of the sixth inning. So Gerlach gets tagged for home runs, so we're all even. And you saw the line score. It's as even as you can get. And that's going to bring up Stahura, Amber Stahura, the right fielder. So the meat of the lineup has produced for the Potters of Morton. They have been doing it all year, and they've been on a tear through the tournament series. Well, Griner has been their go-to girl all year, the one that has had to get the big hit, and she's done it on many occasions. Well, it doesn't get much more dramatic. About the only thing it'd be more is if it was the seventh inning and they, <laughs> they were up by one, but it, it evened it out. Well, when you get into these later innings, like the seventh inning and the eighth inning, if there is one, being up last is a little bit of an advantage. Well, they had Hill, or Smith on first, and the decision, of course, whether to pinch runner and go, but then you'd have to take her out. There is a re-entry rule in high school. You can, a starter can leave and re-enter one time. She'd already That's done correct. it. So they left her in, and she's been pitching a great game. So. Two outs, three and one, and draws. We must have had it was called strike. My mistake. So the count's full. Gerlach hasn't changed expression. She just keeps coming right at you, just like Kristen Smith did. Foul ball grabbed by Cross. So great at bat as Gerlach battles with Tahura. Foul ball, that was a pitch to hit. And we got part of it. So getting a great at bat is to her really working on girl hatch after the home run by Griner. And she draws the walk. So after the two run score, we've got another base runner in the person of Ambers to her. And that will bring up first baseman, Lucy Miller. On this last pitch, you see the ball up and out of the strike zone. Excellent call by umpire Sally Walker. Look, look that ball right into the glove. Miller takes a big cut. That's George looks down, doesn't make the throw. Excellent hitting coaching when you see those batters that don't swing at the ball follow it into the glove. You love to teach your hitters to do that. Gerlach gets ahead of Miller, tries to change his speed and bounces up to Miller. No. Just Tim with that gun at third, nails it for the out. So after six complete innings of play, if you look at Gigi McIntosh, who is thrilled to say we are all tied up. Let's come back for inning number seven. Look there's, at there's the shot heard around Morton for sure. into the excited Morton fans out there in left field. We had a play by the third baseman, uh, Angie Wakehazer, on a gun down over to Lucy Miller for the up. So Alicia Kelly, the cleanup hitter for the Maroons, is retired. So right away, Kristen Smith gets an out following that tie-up by her team. And right back at her. So quickly, the Potters get two outs in the Maroons. So it appears as if there is a little bit of a momentum change. Look at the smile on Kristen Smith. Let's look at how these four runs were scored. Vanderbilt scored early, then Gerlach with a solo bomb in the fourth, and Griner the two-run shot in the sixth. That's our scoring to date as we're in the top half of the sev seventh here at Mineral Springs Park in Keeping, Illinois. Double-A softball. I'm Ann Pensel with Lori Ramsey calling the action for you, and it has been a wonderful ball game as you look at Number 18, right up the Miller, right up the middle. So cross singles. This might be a situation where you would look for a steal. Right down the middle with the pitch. Kristen Smith almost got it, and then it went right under the glove of Lori Greiner. Couldn't have placed the ball any better with her hand. Jess Tim ready to bat, and we're probably going to get a pinch runner for the Maroons, and yes, we are. We get that number, number four. That will be Abby Hodge. We'll be running the senior. Doing a run now with two outs, and uh, Tim at the plate. 
I think uh, the situation for a stolen base is, is a very definite thing. I think uh, probably Coach McConnell's thinking about that right now. We've got the senior on first. He's got a sophomore catcher behind the plate. A converted center fielder, Brooke Monroe, may be tested here in the top half of the seventh. Two out. Nice pitch. Brooke Monroe has an excellent arm, but you don't want to wait for two singles against a, a team like Morton and a pitcher like Kristen Smith. You want to take a chance here, I think, and, and uh, put your runner in scoring position. Especially one who started to smile. It's the first smile we really saw out of Kristen Smith <laughs> after that first out on the night stretch by Lucy Miller. Lucy Miller has done a great job over at first base. Her height, of course, but it's been the digging the balls out of the dirt and the long stretch that have really made her a star tonight. Tries to get her go fishing for one high and outside. No dice. Evidently, Coach Robin McConnell thinks Monroe's arms too tough to run on here because uh, we're staying pretty close to first base over there. Yeah, Abby Hodge not even taking a lead. That ball goes high. Count goes three and one. In fast pitch softball, you can leave the base as soon as the ball leaves the pitcher's hand. If you look at Lucy Miller and Abby Hodge. Back away, says Justin. Oh, move. There's all types of ways to lead off the base from the rocker step to a stride step, too. You see the stride down there now. Sam goes right down to Miller, who grabs out of her glove for the unassisted put out. So not only does she stretch, she grabs the grounders, too. And after a chance for the potters to put it away in the bottom half of the seventh. Can they do it? They do it. We'll be right back. Robin McConnell of Moline, and on the right, Gigi McIntosh of Morton. Tied up, these are two coaches with extensive playing experience themselves and are wonderful with young women. And they've done a great job here tonight. As you look at the score, we're all tied up. The bottom of the seventh and up the bat is designated here, Amanda Schmitko. I think in coaching now, you see a lot of women coaching that have been ex-athletes. When we first started sports, there were, weren't a lot of women with that because of, there were not opportunities for women to participate in sports. I talked with Ola Bundy, the executive director of the IHSA, who's retiring again this month, and I asked her what her greatest achievement has been. And she said, for players who are now coaching, officiating, administrating, in other words, going on, continuing, and the cycle continues. Well, there's a career there now for girls, too, if they'd like to take part. Three and one, so after going three and oh and getting behind, Gerlach puts one down the pipe to Schmidtko. This has been one of the best championship games I've, I've been involved with. It's had a little bit of everything, hitting, pitching, and defense. And that ball going down and unassisted goes Brooke Cross for the out. So after ending the innings, Lucy Miller, Brooke Cross says, I can do that too. So she takes the Potters with the first out and that will bring up number four, Tammy Spezio. Tammy's got a lot of quickness and showed her versatility on the mound earlier today. Tammy, the number eight hitter. The bottom half of the seventh fouled away to the Maroon fans. Tammy Spezio hit 281 during the season, a very respectable batting average, particularly for a number eight hitter. Plays left field and does it very well. Sophomore. All sophomores in the outfield for Morton. No, she gets the chain. So Gerlach threw it to her, and the count goes 0-2. So behind in the count is Spezio. Look at the Maroons exhorting Gerlach. Had her guessing, and she swung at that one and missed it for strike out number two. And that brings up Jenny Neely, number one, the center fielder with good speed. Girl latch coming right at Spezio with her rise ball, and that one jumped. Like you said, most of the rise ball she gives aren't hittable. That one was. Neely does what she did the last time up at bat with the pulled in infield and attempts to bunt, even though everybody knows she's going to do it. Now, she batted from the left. Will she stay there? She She'll does. slap it somewhere. 
one and one. Two and oh, I apologize. That call out of the strike zone. Two and oh, the count. Neely's like a lot of softball batters, a converted right hander. <gasps> Coaches do that with people with good speed. In talking with Denny Thronberg of Casey last week, he said uh, he converted anyone in his grade school program that could run to the left side. Well, Neely puts it down, and she is there. So even with the great arm of Jess Tim, the speed of Denny Neely gets her down to first. So the lead run and the potential championship run is at first base with two up. You see the slap right here, and she chopped it right into the ground, which slows it up. It gets that high bounce, and she's out of there. Perfectly executed slap. And that brings up Brooke Monroe, who's overdue. This girl is a great hitter who hasn't yet uh, really gotten a good swing in this game. Over 400 coming into the tournament. She's been shut out so far. Not normal situation. Now, with good speed on the base pass, Lori, you got to manufacture one with two outs? Well, they may uh, run this uh, Neely girl. I don't know. Uh, she's obviously got great speed. Everybody in the park knew she was going to bunt or slap, and yet she's still able to beat it out. It's going to be very hard to run on Gorge's arm. She's got a great arm. It's interesting, though. Second baseman Bevins is way deep, and the shortstop pulled in. She's got definitely the best move on it. Bevins is very deep. Well, the, the, short hit right. the shortstop will cover on this play if she goes. Now, Neely looking to use the rocker set there at first. Fouled off. She was going. Gerlach has done a good job on Monroe of staying down and changing speeds. If she throws it where she threw it to Griner, this, this young lady's capable of hitting it out there, too. Last time you said that, it went over the left field fence. <laughs> There's a big hole in left center. By the change, great pitch for catcher Nikki Gord to throw out a potential base runner, but not going. Need to stay put. That's my last prediction of the day. <laughs> <laughs> put while I'm winning. <laughs> Gerlach facing Monroe. One and two the count. Goes high, you can count it two and two. So we've got two outs in the count even at two and two as you look at First baseman Brooke Cross trying to hold on Jenny Neely. Game winning runner on first, but there are two out. And Brooke Norman move around, fouled off. Sharply. See the team sticker on the Potters of Morton's helmet. Susie McIntosh instills that in these kids. Gerlach is mixing up her pitches real well. Oh, she got a hold of that changeup, but right at shortstop Amy Vanderven for out number three. So after one, what would be a normal full game, seven innings, we get to play some more. So don't go away. We'll be right back. There you have it, the score. It's as even as the game has been. It's the top half of the eighth, so we're going to extra innings in this double-A championship game, and up to bat to begin with, as you look at a smiling Kristen Smith for the Potters of Morton will be Amy Vanderbilt, who scored the first run of this ball game. And she's locked to score another one. You know, Ann, last week in the Class A tournament, Lebanon and Hersher went 19 innings to establish a new state tournament record for uh, length of game. Well, they also established another record that game of 50 strikeouts, 30 by the losing pitching and 20 by the winning. That would be pressure if you <laughs> struck out 30 batters in one game and lost. That's <laughs> unbelievable. So she singled the third and scored a run. <laughs> and the count, one and one from Kristen Smith. The cool weather is going to help certainly these pitchers. Fatigue not really a factor. This is our second game today, but that's normal. Softball pitchers can pitch a lot more frequently than baseball pitchers. The underhand pitch is a lot easier on the arm. It's a natural motion. Oh. It's the longest game you ever pitched, right? 24 innings, and I lost it one to nothing. Oh. <laughs> kind of like when you get hurt, you say, well, at least we're safe. <laughs> <laughs> right. When you pitch that long, you want to make sure you win. That's tough. That's a lot of innings. That's over three full ball games. Who knows how long they'll go, but whatever they've done, it's been outstanding. Hard hit right at Wakehazer, the vacuum cleaner, and the gun to Miller for the out. Nice play by Angie Wakehazer over to Miller for the out. This ball 
Ball has sharply hit it, Wake Kayser, but she gets down on the ball, has her eyes right on it, and Miller makes another nice stretch over at first base. That brings up Jenny Light, the designated hitter who was stranded at third earlier in the ball game. And this one down to Wake Kayser also, who gets the second out to Miller on the nice stretch. You know, one of the things about this ball game, sometimes in ball games where there are few runs, you can have a mental lapse, but these kids have all been very sharp the whole game. They certainly have. You notice on the replay, the, the exact opposite. This was a very weakly hit ball, and Wake Hazer charged it, made another good, good throw, and Miller, of course, made a nice stretch again. And it's leadoff hitter Sammy Goldstone right back to Smith for out number three. So one, two, three, and the extra innings, Potter's coming to bat. Ready to watch their team play some defense here in the bottom half of the eighth. Moline has teams in both the state softball tournament and the state baseball tournament, which says a lot for the athletic program at that school. And Chatham Glenwood, who finished fourth here at the softball, had the same situation. So That's correct. It's kind of tough on your fans to decide where to go, especially if they're being played at similar times. As Kristen Smith steps in. And she goes right up the middle, so we've got a leadoff feature. Now here's a tough one, why Kristen Smith is the pitcher. She's a leadoff hitter, do you sub, because if you take her out? Absolutely not. Not the way she's pitching, I wouldn't take her out of the game. You notice uh, she takes this outside pitch to the left side, which is excellent piece of hitting, and an excellent piece of outfield defense, because that ball was headed in the gap. They bring her a jacket, that's as far as they're going to go. So two times in a row now, she's been on base. And the last time she was homered home by Glider. How do you pitch the Glider? I think they almost have to pitch the Glider. The question is, does Coach McIntosh have Glider bunt or swing away? <laughs> because one run will do it. And uh, you know, you're leaving yourself open to second guess if you bunch your home run hitter, but if I were in her shoes, I'd probably bunch because there are good hitters behind. It's only going to take one run to win this, and I'm sure that's what they're talking about now. The way Kayser went to right field, she would be the batter after this if, in fact, that comes to them. So that certainly is where you'd want it to go. Way Kayser can hit and, uh, against anybody. And they've got the meat of the lineup like they did the last time this was with Griner, Way Kayser, and Stahura and then Lucy Miller, so nobody out. The pitcher Smith on first, and Greiner, who Frank went over the left field fence last time up to tie the ball game up to bat. But McIntosh has made the decision and is telling Greiner and signaling it to everybody. The other question in your mind is, is Kristen Smith quick enough to score on a single to the outfield if she's on second base? And that's what Gigi McIntosh has to decide. Let's see if Gerlach stays down on her. You're not going to give her anything good. And they haven't so far. So right now, Gerlach pitching around her, around the plate, not giving her anything down the pipe to hit. 2-0. Oh. Well, I guess a walk's as good as a bond, isn't it? Actually, you bet. And maybe safer. Oh, oh. Hard hit, but the great fielding glove of Alicia Gerlach. Double play. Greiner just drills this ball. She throws it down the middle, and she hits it down the middle, but Gerlach's reflexes are amazing. In her home run, she got that bat through as quickly as anybody you'd want to see. And right there, that ball was hit a mile a minute, and she got in front of it. Well, with two outs, it brings up Angie Wakehazer. Third baseman who doubled in the fourth. It's stranded. Oh, and she hits a long ball out to right fielder Aaron Crean, but she, she makes a good turn, grabs it for out number three. So after eight complete innings of play, 
We are all tied up still at two. There's your score. We've completed eight innings of play. And there's Brooke Hatterman, last year's catcher on his team from Morton, cheering on her team, coming back. She's been leading cheers and cheering on. There she is, sportsmanship. Waving her pom-pom, she caught for Southern Illinois University this year. And talk about a good arm, she had one. Oh yeah, and a very tall catcher who nobody ran on in last year's game against Belleville East. She threw out four, not one or two, four runners trying to steal second base. And up to bat, Amanda Bevins trying to move the ball down as a pulled on infield of the Potters. Moline trying to get a run on as this is their number two hitter. And we're the top half of the ninth. Kristen Smith still on the mound, as is her counterpart, Elisa Gerlach. Lefty against lefty. Whoa, takes the swing, aborted. And she strikes out for out number one. Which brings Gerlach to the plate, and Kristen Smith has not bypassed her. And she's gotten her on a couple of occasions. So that last time, right back at her. So let's see what happens in this duel. High and outside. 1 0. I have to think that was a little bit of a waste pitch. Either that or it got away. <laughs> A little bit low, 2-0. Oh. She goes behind, not trying to give her anything up in, in the letter. You certainly don't want to come into her and say, here it is, hit it. And it's going to go to Griner. The senior throws out Gerlach. So they get the dangerous Gerlach on a grounder to short, as you see Lucy Miller. And that will bring up cleanup hitter Alicia Kelly. Alicia Kelly hitting 456 for the season. That makes it a little hard to walk Gerlach, really. Just like it makes it a little hard to walk Griner with Wakehazer behind her. So Kelly up to bat two out the top half of the night. Smith takes a deep breath. <gasps> Outside, strike one. Good pitch, good location. You see a lot of pitchers in softball really working that low outside corner now. Hitters have to learn how to take that pitch to right field. That ball is high, even to count at one and one. I don't think either Gerlach or Kristen Smith have slowed down a bit since the start of the game. Now there may be some emotion changes here, but absolutely no slowdown. And very much concentration. Infield's in, foul back. Not in too much, but outfield straight away. In this gorgeous park in Mineral Springs. Kristen Smith has excellent speed. She's got a very good quick arms, arm swing. She's worked with John Fowser, Ashley Fowser, Fowser's dad, and he's done an excellent job of teaching her the fundamentals. Oh, tries to change. Look at that fence out there. The only fence, the snow fence, is at 200 feet all the way around left, center, and right. And you can see the tarps thrown over the windscreens over the outside fence in yellow and green. Makes for a beautiful sight here at this park. Foul dip. The outfield slants downhill and makes excellent drainage. You know, on a perfect softball field, the architects say that the outfield fence should be three feet, the last, the out, furthest spot in center field should be three feet below home plate for drainage. And I think Pekin kind of exemplifies that. Smith, hard hit right at Miller, who made it look very easy down there at first base. So the Potters will come to bat again. They had a lead off the last time. Can they put it away? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Here's your game summary. Vanderbilt with a run scored in the second, then Gerlach the bomb in the fourth, and Greiner the two, two run shot in the sixth, and that's where we're at as we look at the bottom half of the ninth inning. Playing two extras, and it's as even as you can get. Up to bat first will be Amber Sahura, 
Amber, the right fielder, hitting 409 for the season. Yet to, to get a hit in this. Uh, sorry, she had a double in this one. Morton's in a very good spot in their lineup with the number five hitter up there. They're very strong through five, six, and seven. They truly have a power. She's over two tonight. And do it for the number five hitter. Now would be a nice time to do it. Great pitch by Gerlach. She pulled the string on that pitch. And got it in the strike zone on the two. So for her, being outguessed right now by Alicia Gerlach. She threw that waste pitch. You want to see your pitchers throw with two strikes. You never want to really see them throw much in the strike zone, and she didn't. Mr. Hurra protected the plate. Gerlach, with what appeared to be an off-speed changeup, goes outside with it. It wasn't hittable even if it had been full speed. It was an off-speed out curve, actually. And, and Again, she did what good pitchers do. She got the batter to swing at a ball. This one's breaking out away from the plate. And I think uh, Stahura started her swing and then just couldn't stop it. She needed a bat extender on that one by the time she the plate. <laughs> Lucy Miller got the first uh, same offering, but for a ball from Berlach. And now 2-0. Oh. So Miller goes ahead of pitcher Berlach. Miller, the first baseman, who's been outstanding here defensively tonight. Foul off. Batter to swing at a ball. This one breaking out away from the plate. And I think uh, Stahura started her swing and then just couldn't stop it. She needed a bat extender on that one by the time she the plate. Lucy Miller got the first uh, same offering, but for a ball. From Berlach and now 2 0. So Miller goes ahead of pitcher Berlach. Miller, the first baseman, who's been outstanding here defensively tonight. Fouled off. Berlach very calm out there on the mound. Miller has been this steady over there at first base on the long stretches and the unassisted just put out. Called strike. Even up at two and two. Very nice talking to herself. This was another low outside uh, rollover drop and drop after it crossed the plate. I think that was a good call. So I'm a little concerned about that call, but where, where it crosses the plate, not where it ends up, not where the catcher catches it. And that's what's so tough about some of those drops when they go down all of a sudden. It looks like they're out of the zone. Well, Miller works the count to full with one out. And lays his one to right. That'll be a play at first, but not in time to get the hustle in Miller. Now, Darren Green brings it in to work cross. We have a base runner. At first, it's Miller, who has not left the game. There could be a pinch runner, and it looks like Gigi McIntosh is going to bring one in, because remember, there's a re-entry rule. You we'll see the pitch here from Gerlach outside, and Miller does exactly what she should. Takes it to right field on one bounce. There's a play at first, but Lucy Miller beats it out. She is smiling as she talks to assistant coach, Monica McLaughlin. Number three will be entering the lineup for the Morton Potters, and that is Donya Tetrault. Donya is a sophomore. She's going to be pinch running. Second such person used by G.G. McIntyre. And she represents the winning run with one out. Petrault was used earlier today as a pinch runner. I think Morton has two or three girls that do that exclusively. Schmitkoff fouls it up, but off the back screen. So Nikki Gorge with no play. So on the butt attempt, fouls it back. Miles down at Gigi McIntosh, she gives her a signal. I think Amanda was trying to get out of the box a little too fast at that <laughs> time. <laughs> gotta hit it before you run. That's right. And you gotta hit the top half of it when you're bunny. Well, the corner's inching up. She puts it down right to the catcher, Nikki Gorge, who throws her out to Bevan. So the Foul sacrifice. ball. Oops. Foul ball. And she'll come back. 
Sally Walker gave the sign immediately. Well, I got all excited for that thing. That was it. <laughs> this time she pop, she hits it. You can see it uh, rolling on the outside of the line of the plate. Good call by Sally Walker behind the plate. Now we're deciding, I guess, if we're going to bunt with two strikes or not. Whatever it is, she picked all the green. <laughs> Which is a smart thing to do. Take it a deep breath. <laughs> all that tournament experience, look at the smile on her face. All that tournament experience by Judy McIntyre really helps. It helps you pick that up. You've been there, Coach, you know, and, and it's terrific. Well, when you've experienced it all yourself, you know how the players feel. Oh, she tried to. Dipsy Doodle tried to fake the bunt and go with the slap, and she just went underneath the ball, so it's a strikeout for Girl. What they were going to do was try and hit the ball past the charging third baseman, but he missed the ball, so that ended that. It's a good idea, just not able to connect. So that brings up Spezio, Tammy Spezio. She's a long hit. It's dropping fast. And a nice play made by Sammy Goldstone, who's made two of those here tonight on her knees. So they threatened, but were unable to score. So we're going to go to 10. There's your line score. We're in the top half of the 10th inning, and the same pitchers are still on the mound. Kristen Smith for the Potters of Morton, and she is facing. Number 11, Nikki Gord, the catcher for Moline, and she throws the strike. Smith throwing that good fastball. She's got a very explosive windup and good wrist action. Gorge is 0 for 2, the hard-hitting catcher. And there goes, oh, and it's Greiner with the bat, and now Greiner with the glove. Timed it perfectly. She got a great jump on that ball. Players who get great jumps make great plays. Through a high pitch, excellent arm extension, pretty good vertical jump there too, Ann. She really made a good jump on the ball. She was moving so well that she, she really timed made it perfectly. It. Another thing, she had her glove back so that she got the the uh, longest possible reach in. And that brings up Brooke Cross, the first baseman. Oh. Uh, that hit the butt end of the bat down there, the bat handle. For That's a foul the second ball. time. Yeah. That's a little unusual. It doesn't hit the player, but it hits the knob. Oh, yeah, thud. She's standing, standing. The ball's breaking in. Smith throws that little uh, in curve on, on right handers, and they don't see it till the last second. I remember when it used to be a big deal to try a bunt with the butt end, the butt handle of the bat. That's right, the Japanese started that, and they used it in international play in the early 70s, and that's, uh, and they did it very successfully. That was intentional, that one was not. <laughs> right. Count is even, one and one with one out here at the top of the tent. The Maroons and the Potters all tied up in a double-A championship game. Smith, loop down to Waycager, a can of corn, she makes the out for out number two. And that will bring up third baseman, Jess Kim. Third baseman, number 10, Jess Kim. Jess has had an outstanding defensive tournament, as has Angie Wakehazer. We're seeing two great defensive third basemen in the same game. Once in a while, I try to call Angie, Jan, or Joy, who are two outstanding aunts who are athletes. Jan being a long jump and take back me. Joy preceding competitive athletics but an outstanding sprinter in what's going on. Jess Tim, third baseman. Two outs and 0-1 the time. Nice fit. But a little bit low outside. One and one. Smith having no problem keeping her concentration, pitching the fine. In fact, I think she's gotten stronger as the game's gone on. I it almost looks like she's throwing the ball a little harder. I think her confidence is built. That ball picked up, bobbled, and both ways. So having trouble with it down at second was freshman Angela Simmons, and even Lucy Miller, the sure-handed first baseman, has difficulty. Two outs and a runner on first then. Angela 
Simmons made a nice play to get to that ball. She's got a lot of range at second base. Looked like she closed her glove a little bit too soon and then rushed her throw. And I think Lucy Miller took her eye off of it because the throw was there. It looked like it was going to be a hit. Simmons grabs it, fires it, Cat Creek singled, safe at first. Simmons has excellent range. Amy Vanderven, the shortstop at bat, strike one to her. There are two outs with the runner on first. That's a go-ahead run. Vanderven's had a very good game defensively at Shark. Got a great arm. He's had three scoreless innings since he last saw somebody cross the plate in the sixth. They're now in the tenth. Very few base runners since that time. That was a nice low outside pitch by Kristen Smith. In the strike zone, didn't give her much to hit at good velocity. Counts 0 and 2. In softball, the drop ball is a big pitch. So Smith ahead of the batter, with two outs. Probably give her a waste pitch and try to get her go for it. Gonna go down to Wakehazer, pulls it up and fires. Can't pick single signal safe. On a close play, one of the very few we've had. We really haven't had any close plays in any of the bases. That was a real bang bang play at first base. Here we see the ball outside, the batter not going with the pitch. Wakehazer bringing it right across. Close, close. <laughs> I'm glad I don't umpire. I'm not one of those players that followed in the officiating. <laughs> And that will bring up Jenny Light with runners at first and second, two out. So Smith needs to bear down on this number nine hitter. Light's got great speed, a good bunner. Has not shown much power in this tournament. One thing about Smith and Gerlach, both of them have been locking chair pitchers, not making it tough for their catchers. And of course, in a situation like this, that's crucial in having a good control. Right, they both have excellent control. So the outfield is in. And the infield at normal depth. With runners at first and second. Right back to Smith, so she gets her. Oh my gosh! And right now, safe at home, and from what looked to be an easy, sure out to the Lucy Smith, it is Bedlam. Struck what happened for you here. This one went right back to Kristen. I, I Smith. didn't see the play, but I believe Lucy probably took her eye off the ball. Kristen Smith made a great stretch. Picked it up. Paul was right. She was in there. And to Robin Lindley McConnell's credit, she kept uh, her runner going. Jess Tim made a nice hand slide. Gave catcher Brooke Monroe not very much to tag. Well, we said that probably be, look at the angle coming home. Lucy Miller coming home. Brooke Monroe's out there. She has the plate block, but Tim runs past her and reaches back with the hand. It was a perfect play by the base runner. Tim never stopped running. Hustled down by Robin McConnell around. Kristen Smith draws a deep breath. Just a great hand slide. If she, if she would have uh, used just a straight slide or even a hook slide, she would have been out at the plate. So Moline takes the lead in the top half of the tenth. And that will bring up leadoff hitter Sandy Goldstone. There's a runner at third and second. They would sure like to add to this because the Potters have been coming back all year. Strike one. So what looked to be an easy out to get out of a tough inning turns into a run for the Maroons on an unusual play. Old for four Sammy Goldstone has a chance to bring in a couple more if she can get one out of the infield in a hole. She's got good speed on the base pass. Kristen Smith's doing a great job of coming back at, at Goldstone. And the infield playing in, actually in front of the, the uh, baseline because Sammy Goldstone's so fast. There it goes, down to Wakehazer. She goes to first for the out. And Lucy Miller hangs on to that one as they hustle in. And after nine and a half innings, we're going to go to bottom half of ten. The Potters down by one. Here's
here's the crucial play. The ground ball to Kristen Smith. She makes a great stop. Just a basic throw. Lucy Miller drops the ball. The runner is safe. And Coach McConnell picks it up. Tim sees the opportunity. Slides behind the catcher with a perfect hand slide. Great base running job by Jess Tim. Base running wins a lot of games for you, and there's an instance where it might. Brooke Monroe had that block as well as a catcher can, and the great slide by Jess Tim may prove to be the championship run. Three outs to a championship that Gerlach needs to pitch, and she's gonna start it off by going against Jenny Neely. All speed, the center fielder. All that. Jenny Neely's not only all speed, she's a 324 hitter. Last time up, she bunted. Everybody knew she was going to do it. She still beat it out. My guess is she'll do it again. She tries to slap, and she's going to out outrun Bivens, and she is safe at first, says Pat Creek. So two left or nothing close on either base pass. We've had two successive close plays at first, and one in favor of each team. Here's Jenny Neely slapping the ball and taking off. The first baseman came over to pick up the ball, and it was another bang-bang play. Pat Creek has some very tough calls to make. And there's a runner on first, it's Neely, and that brings up Brooke Monroe, the catcher who had the plate blocked so well and um, was unable to stop the great slide of Jess Tim. She squares around a butt, puts down a butte and advances Neely to second. So the tying run is on at second on the sacrifice by Monroe. That will bring up pitcher Kristen Smith. Kristen has been on two successive times. We should say hitter Kristen Smith because she has hit the ball hard and she's hit it where it's pitched. The last time they threw her outside and she took the ball to left center. So it's one out, left-handed pitcher Kristen Smith up. Two straight hits. She's been leading off on those hits each time. If you ever wanted one, this is where she'd really like to get it now. To tie this ball game up. Keep the marathon going. That was a good pitch to hit right down the middle. Sally Walker says no pitch. Steps out. So we'll break it up again here. Oh, and one the count. One out. Bottom half of the tenth. Home team, the Potters are down by one. Oh, she thought about that late. Excellent drop ball by Alicia Gerlach. You can see the concentration in Kristen Smith's face. The outfield's medium depth bar. Now, now the Gerlach and uh, Gorge. Nikki Gorge are going to have a little conference. Just Tim comes over to encourage him, and all the time, uh, Gigi McIntosh is reviewing all the options here for Kristen Smith. And they had a tough inning as a pitcher. Gigi came out and really calmed down the head, so it's trying to do the same thing for the plate right now. She's got an 0-2 count. And Gerlach gets her to swing at the low outside pitch for out number two. And this is a powerhouse matchup if you've ever seen one. The home run hitter versus the other home run hitter, really. Well, if you could create a scenario for your team that you'd want to have happen a state championship, who would you want at bat with your senior star shortstop, Lori Dryden? She's the one that tied it up the last time, the miracle worker. Can she do it again here in the bottom of the tenth? Coach Robin McConnell's come out to the mound. I think they're trying to make a decision on whether to walk her or pitch to her. And I'm sure uh, Robin's been here many times herself. She was an outstanding amateur fastball pitcher. Just him laughs. They're not too tense out there, are they? No. Well, they've got the run. There's two outs. Runners in scoring position. That's Greiner at bat. Did you look at her? A great clutch hitter. And there's speed out at second. So it's not going to take much. We just need to hit a hole. And for the Maroons, we need it out. So Gigi says 
said, you just relax, take it easy. You can feel the electricity here in this park. And the count evens at one and one to Griner. You've got to believe that Girl Latch isn't going to give her anything too good with first base open. Outfield's pretty deep, left field very deep, center about average, and right field pretty good depth for a le left-handed hitter. I think she's going to say, hit my pitch or we'll give you first base. Yep, yep. that's exactly what they're doing. Looks like it's going to come down to Angie Wakehazer, the cleanup hitter, which is a tough decision. Well, when you've got a 500 hitter coming up, uh, they decided not to give her anything unless she was going to go fishing, and Griner's too smart for that. So we've got runners on first and second, and Wakey's are coming to bat. The junior, Griner smiling. Angie Wakey's hit 504 this year. How many 504 hitters do you think have had a runner, a batter walk in front of them? In front of them, right. And she's hit the ball hard all night. Well, it's a duel. And Gerlach comes right at a big lead by Neely. Out on second. She double in the fourth. The right field. And she'd love to do it again. Oh! Fooled her on that changeup on a good pitch by Gerlach. She's had that pitch going all night long. That was an out curve changeup. The ball broke, dropped and was a different speed. Very tough pitch to handle for anyone. Gerlach against Wakehazer for a state championship in double A softball. Outside, good eye and good calmness by Wakehazer. One and two the count. One run to tie. The winning run is at first. Look at the concentration on Wakehazer's face. She has crowded that plate. She is determined. And Gerlach strikes her out with the chain. And the Maroons of Moline have won the state championship 3-2 in 10 innings, beating the Potters of Morton. And it is Robin McConnell's first state championship in a number four for Moline as a school. As they congratulate each other, this was an outstanding ball game. It doesn't get any better than this. Two heavyweights slugging it out, both on the mound and at the plate. Both these teams and both these schools can be proud of these young ladies and the effort they put in. It's a real tough situation for Morton, and it's a great situation for Moline. Tears of joy and tears of happiness, whichever side you're on. And we'll be back with the awards as you look at the fans who have made this so exciting here at Mineral Springs right after this. The story of the game, Vanderbilt one score to the third, that girl action with the blast to right center, homeward in the fourth, and Twine of the shortstop for Morton with the two-run shot to left in the sixth. The winning run, unfortunately on the air, is scored by Jess Tim of the Moline Maroon. Here we have the last pitch of the game. Gerlach strikes out Angie Wakehazer, 500 hitter Angie Wakehazer on a beautiful out curve. And the Moline Maroons win their fourth state championship, but the first for Coach Robin McConnell in 1996. And the runners up, coached by Gigi McIntosh, here receiving her well-deserved medal from Kent Harris and Barb Waddell. This is a game no one deserved to lose. They split this year. The one that counted was the one that was done on a Saturday night in Pekin, Illinois, for state championship. And there's the trophy hoisted by the seniors of Morton. The outstanding runners up in 1996, the nearby Potters. In many ways, there were no losers in this game, Ann. It was such a well-played game, and I think down through the years, the players on the Morton team will realize that they've accomplished an awful lot. Nikki Gorge and Amanda Bevins from Barb Waddell, the championship trophy. They are going home with the gold. There they are, the state champs.
this time, the Sports Channel would like to thank H. David Fry, Susan Hendrickson, all those at the Illinois High School Association for making this championship event possible. We'd also like to thank Barb Waddell and Ken Ayers for their cooperation in the coordination of this event. This game was produced and directed by Jim Corno Jr. Graphics coordinator was Jeff Miller. Remote facilities were provided by Trio Video. Coordinate producer David A. Turner. Our production manager is Sheila Brown. And our VP of programming and sports channel is Mike Bogan. Once again, the 1996 Illinois High School Association AA softball champions are the Moline Maroons as they defeated the Potters of Morton 3-2 in 10 innings. For Lori Ramsey, I'm Ann Penstone saying so long till next year. The proceeding has been an exclusive presentation of Sports Channel.